This is Twit. If you're looking to catch a glimpse of the future, then you'd be hard pressed to find an event that showcases a taste of what the future might look like better than the World's Fair Nano, which actually took place in San Francisco this last weekend. What's it like being a drone? We began our journey exploring some of the more modern methods of transportation. LeafTech, for example, offers a skateboard with a unique wheel array underneath the deck that helps the board ride like a snowboard. Imagine we're going down a cat track. All right. Pull up to the lift and you just do your little slide stop like you're about to get on the lift, okay? But I've got no slide because I'm not on snow. You're, you're thinking about this. You gotta, you gotta see the snow. That's why I make you close your eyes. Yeah! On the other hand, the folks at Geoblade offered a high-tech hoverboard that, well, let's just say it rides quite a bit differently than what I was used to. It was pretty hard for me to adjust to. Vibrating isn't working. Don't bend your knees. Okay, bend that's knees. different. Because when I go snowboarding, I bend my knees. Yeah, yeah this is the only board ah, you can so bend your knees. Got it. The beauty is that once you've got it, you're both hands free. It makes it look easy. I give up. Now, we've all been to the airport and, you know, needed to go from one side to the other. And let's face it, all that walking can get a bit tiring after a while. Well, the team at Motobag actually have carry-on luggage that magically transforms itself into a vehicle when needed. So you lock it in place, pull these out, you turn it on, and off I go. Two speed settings, Love five it. miles an hour and eight miles an hour. <gasps> you can go a range of 10 miles on a single battery charge. Hey, it works. Not, not that bad. That's all fine and good, but let's go from the now and step into the true future. We might be the same height, but you're just a little bit more enhanced on the feet region. What's going on down there? Cheating a little bit. We have the Bionic boots here. Not necessarily a consumer product at the moment, but this amazing exoskeleton developed by Kihei Seymour allows for superhuman running speeds. It's a pair of shoes that makes a human run at 25 miles an hour. Our use of passive energy springs. I'm looking towards future advancements with servos and actuators to to boost the performance to 45 miles an hour. The World's Fair Nano also offered a glimpse into the ways technology plays with the mind. Virtual reality continues to trend upwards, and the Hologate team has been rolling out its turnkey multiplayer VR setup in recreation centers across the country. Well, the idea is it's a social experiment. You know, we want to have people actually be together and work together as a team. We have haptic feedback lights, we have uh, screens that are not just first person, they're actually third person cameras that are, you know, different around. Uh, I mean, everybody wants to play this. As evidenced by the line to view the technology, which sprawled out to a two hour wait for the entirety of the day. Ever played a game with your mind? If the puzzle box is any indication, mind control could become quite a big deal as the technology develops. In this case, a player's focus is measured within the mechanics of the game, and that focus will actually fire off the propellers of the encased flying machine. You're going to raise this red bar up until it hits the target. Once it does, that will trigger the helicopter to take off and fly just like that. And as long as you stay focused, what? You stay in the air, and if you get distracted, <laughs> it's gonna land. Replicating that, however, was an even bigger challenge. I see it getting so close, and you're nodding. You're like, yeah, you almost, oh, no, no. no. Cinema snow globe, shake it, and it plays a video inside. You may think I'm talking to you right now, but I'm watching a movie. The World's Fair Nano featured a lot of tech, but it also featured a glimpse at how the future might taste. Do I want to try some algae-based nutritional bar? I think you should. However, it's going to be a journey. It's like an intense experience. Some people cannot finish it. Some people like, I love it. Okay. That's very interesting. <laughs> does, it, does it taste healthy? Yeah, it absolutely does. Of course it does. It, it, it doesn't taste artificial. I mean, I never have considered what algae tastes like, but I suppose it tastes like this. You're actually correct. We're kind of like like complemented the flavor with something to be more palatable but still you get that taste of ocean it's definitely a new experience that you've never had before and you get the benefit of green teeth which is not a bad thing huh? and tongue as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it I don't understand soil and it doesn't taste bad it's just it's very bland uh, okay now 
I get it. I've been trying to interview them, and they just won't talk to me. How do we inspire the next generation of future thinkers? Smart Girls was showcasing its platform for teaching young girls how to build their own understanding of the fundamentals of coding. It uses what we're calling sugar-coded. It's a block system. It's very, very simple. You have commands over here that you can drag and drop and adjust. Uh, I'm going to show you something else, which I think is really cool. When you look at these blocks, and then you look at the code behind it, you see the same numbers. You see words instead of uh, the blocks themselves, and you realize it's not that big of a leap from doing this to real coding. All centered around these small motorized toys that can perform a number of maneuvers based entirely upon the coding prowess of the user. Your coding is obviously top notch because she didn't go off the table. She did fall once, which also proves she's very durable because she's back up there doing it again. Why are there diodes in this banana? Um. And then we saw the team at WebGuys showing off how they're enabling young students to become adept in the ways of building things like virtual reality environments, as well as, well, inserting strange probes into bananas for dramatic and educational effect. You tap a banana, you're making some music. Mycroft AI was there with its own smart home assistant platform, totally open source because, well, why should all the tech giants have all the fun, especially when these home assistants are being scrutinized for how secure and how private they may or may not be. We don't collect any information off the voice interactions. Um, we do have an opt-in uh, for people who trust us. They want to uh, contribute their data to our data sets uh, to help improve the experience and then customizable. I mean, you see here we can do, uh, you know, some different colors. You can change the name and the wake word. You can change the voice. All our hardware is open hardware, hackable hardware. So take the schematics, adjust them a little bit, put it on the head of your robot, take the guts out and put them in a different device. It looks like Amy is free at 5 p.m. today. Some of the stuff that really sings to me personally is what we're seeing in the way of audio technology and how that merges with experiential control systems and visual representations, which is what LoveTech had on tap. They had this really cool booth that allowed you to talk to a person on the other side of the booth through a microphone with all of these really crazy audio effects and play around on an X, Y axis. Really cool stuff. But they also had this cool oscilloscope setup. There's a whole variety of sounds, and what you're seeing is actually what the sound looks like. The uh, left channel goes up and down with the electron gun, and the right channel goes left and right. And it's showing it really quickly, but that's exactly what the sound looks like. You're seeing a spaceship here. I imagine you, you created the sound from the picture in that case, right? Well, it goes in both directions. So um, there's a really wonderful uh, piece of software. Um, Jared Bean Fenderson is like one of the pioneers of this whole art form. And the software lets you import three-dimensional models and, and see what they, uh, hear what they sound like. And also go in the opposite direction where you uh, synthesize new sounds and see what they look like. Right. So you, from that uh, dual perspective, you can generate sounds that you know, look this amazing. Overall, it was an absolute blast wandering the pier, examining, enjoying, and in some cases consuming what may have one day been thought of as the future. What's more exciting is that the future, as evidenced by what I saw with my own eyes last weekend, is now.